Hello everyone, it's Belladonna and Madame Weepsy again, here to talk to you about my favorite things regarding the movie Parents. Nineteen eighty nine parents. Often overlooked. Give it a look, trust me. One of my favorite things. Randy Quaid. Now everyone knows Randy Quaid as a cousin Eddie from the vacation films, you know, Merry Christmas. Hmm. This is anything but cousin Eddie. This shows that Randy Quaid, I think, really was a very good actor, and it's it's a shame that he's gone by the wayside really, because this was a very stoic chilling and eerie sort of performance by him that I did not expect when I first saw this and I think it turns a lot of people off because they're looking for Cousin Eddie of course get past that because it's really an excellent excellent performance by Mr. Quaid he really nails it and he makes this movie 100% number two directed by Bob Balaban now Bob Balaban is not really known as a director to my knowledge he's a very very well known character actor you see his face, you know exactly who he is. When I realized he was the director, I was really floored. It's another talent that you don't expect. I think this movie has a lot of unexpected things about it. But the fact that Mr. Balaban did this, and it maybe the darkness and poor reception of this movie, maybe made it so he didn't direct as much anymore, which is a shame. Because he really did a phenomenal job. There are many great directors out there, and you think of horror directors, and you think of certain types of people. But someone like that, to nail this sort of very psychological and dark story, very cool, and I think it shows a lot of talent in that direction as well. Three, the setting. So this takes place in the 1950s. Now, these days especially, you see a lot of nostalgic things. You see movies and shows taking place in the 50s, the 80s, the 70s, whatever. The problem I find with that usually is that in nostalgic pictures, they're hitting you over the head with nostalgia. Don't forget, it's 1980. Everyone wore leg warmers and loved Pat Benatar, or something stupid like that. You know, everybody had pompadours and listened to doo-wop in the 50s. We get it, you're in the 50s. This actually looks sort of like, I don't know, Leave it to Beaver <laughs> went real in some way. I know that sounds strange, but it captures the essence of a 1950s home. I don't say that as no, I was there. But the idea of a 1950s home, I think more accurately, without the excessive nostalgia kick for it. It really puts you into the setting. And of course that setting is when many people would consider life to have been so very great. The 1950s, oh, so very perfect. This movie works to dispel those notions, really about the hidden aspect of such an idyllic time, but rather than overdo it and smack you in the face with it, it just plays like it's real. It's beautifully done, it actually is very crisp and, and lovely looking. The colors are beautiful, all that sort of thing. So it really is a very well-made movie, and it looks quite beautiful. Number four, the fact that this is really more of an art film. Now, I say that like the understanding that it's very much like a David Lynch film. If you're a fan of David Lynch, you'll definitely like this movie. It has that same kind of vibe, a little bit of um, Twin Peaks meets Blue Velvet. But it also has this rather lovely soundtrack that sort of plays fun but pulls you into it as well so it's very artistically done the angles for instance of the little boy looking up at his father randy quaid who is really quite tall gives you this really amazing perspective of feeling tiny and vulnerable and afraid and seeing not only the world but your very father as giant above you now i find that again like say david lynch films this is a wonderful mix of that element of comedy, darkness, sadness, and gore, even fear, that is very much lost in not just modern films, but often Hollywood films, if you will. This movie was not going for anybody's approval. It was going to make a great art film. One great thing about that is that um, Siskel and Ebert, all right, Gene Siskel actually liked it a great deal. Roger Ebert absolutely hated it and was all put off by it. Oh, what a rhyme baby. So when a critic like Roger Ebert doesn't like it, it's probably good. And five. Cannibalism. 
Now, I'm not trying to be cute. Cannibalism is, of course, no laughing matter. But the way it's actually treated, I'm not going to say something stupid like, oh, it makes cannibalism good. Cannibalism is not good. Do not try this at home. But it's almost subtle. And then it becomes more like a horror movie. This actually approaches it like you could believe this happened. You could believe your very neighbors are next door. And if you don't, be careful. I might get a bite out of you. You might be breakfast. You might really be invited to the next barbecue. So I love the way that it actually approaches its subject matter all around. I can't say enough good things about this film. Many people may disagree with me. I don't care. Check out Parents. You'll laugh. You might even cry. You will be disturbed. And you're gonna love it. So, Madam Weeps, what do we think about Parents? We give it two paws up. That's right, darling. Thank you for watching, everyone. Bye for now. Bye. <gasps>